Hey everyone, James Storm here, and as a guerrilla filmmaker for nearly 30 years, I've had the privilege of directing and writing several feature guerrilla film projects. As an artist, I can appreciate the creation process. All great films have to begin with an amazing script. As a writer, I have to recognize that the actual process of writing can often be the most painful aspect of filmmaking. In my experience, a good writer is hard to find, and it's even harder to find one that actually produces exciting content. But sometimes, no matter how good the content is, all good authors get hung up putting their ideas to paper. That's why I've invited down to the studio tonight my friend and associate, world-famous author, producer, and entrepreneur, John O'Melveny Woods, to help me discuss the writing process within guerrilla filmmaking. Author of countless screenplays and several adventure novels, including Return to Treasure Island, Jesse James's Secret, The Seekers, and the newly to be released Crusader series. I give you author, filmmaker, entrepreneur, John and Melvany Woods. John, welcome back to the studio. Well, thank you, James. I'm glad to be here. I really appreciate you coming out. I know it's really short notice and you just flew in from the East Coast, but I'm glad you're here to talk about the writing process with us today. Yeah, well, again, thank you for inviting me. I just wanted to share with you a little bit about the writing process and how much I enjoy doing it. And also, uh, you, you gave me the idea that it would be helpful for the uh, viewers of the show to learn a little bit about the writing process. So that's what I wanted to talk about with you today. Right on. For me, it was a late in life process. Um, I decided that I wanted to write when I was 40 years old. Prior to that, I had a number of different businesses. So I ended up selling my business, going back to film school, and getting a, a degree in film writing. That led to me writing screenplays and television shows and things like that. But during that whole process, I never found my, you might say my sweet spot, the thing that I really enjoyed doing. I'd go to these meetings with the, uh, script, write, uh, with the script writers in the, in the uh, suits, as they say on the things, and you've been through this, and they go, Wow, this is a great idea, John, but let's just change it. <laughs> and, sure. and as soon as I heard, let's change it, my heart goes, uh, I'm not happy with this process. So I'd always thought about writing books, mm. and so I decided to take my hand at it, and I spent two years writing Return to Treasure Island. And after that, I knew what it is I wanted to do. It's the one medium I can control, I can tell a story, I can flush out the characters, there's nobody sitting on my shoulder telling me that's right and wrong. And the most important thing is, as a writer, and also with you as a filmmaker, a guerrilla filmmaker really, is that when you're done with the process, it's your vision. You never have to worry, did I change it because of somebody else or I did not change it be because of somebody else. And that's what separates what I think really creative people, and like with you with the guerrilla filmmaker and, and book writers and so on, separates them from the, the corporate aspect of writing. Total creative freedom. Correct, yes. Now John, you're an entrepreneur, you're an inventor, you're a world traveler, but I think it'd be fair to say that first and foremost, at the heart of it all, you're a storyteller. That's absolutely right, right James, because as I mentioned before, when I was 40 years old, I decided I was going to risk everything to tell stories. So that's what I did. And whether you're writing a movie, or writing a television show, or talking with friends, or writing books. It's all about the story, engaging the reader, engaging your audience. And in fact, that's really what guerrilla filmmaking is about, isn't it, James? Absolutely, and you know, I have to say, as a filmmaker that primarily writes most of his own material, I'll be honest and say that in my experience, uh, I've found that writing is the most difficult and painful aspect of the filmmaking process. And I think I've observed that in my colleagues and fe fellow filmmakers. Um, they all seem to get tripped up and they seem to stumble during the writing process. And they always ask me the same question, how do you write worthwhile content within a reasonable amount of time. So I'm gonna pose that question to you, John. How do you write valuable content within a reasonable amount of time? Well, therein lies the conundrum, doesn't it? As I mentioned earlier, and I truthed out on it, it took me two years wow. to write Return to Treasure Island. But that's a very, very difficult process. But on the whole, I would say that the most important thing as far as writing material that is quality material and storytelling material is that you have to have a plan. You know, I, I'm not of the school where uh, you say, well, I'm gonna start writing a story and see where it's gonna go, because that's exactly what happens, it goes nowhere. 
But if you start off with a story and you put a lot of thought into it and say, here's the story, here's the beginning, the middle, and the end. I know where I need to go. Then the magic starts. The magic starts on the journey, but you still have your plot points of where you're going to go. And I think that with filmmakers, especially guerrilla filmmakers, the problem is, is that they have a great idea, uh, but they don't write it out, the beginning, the beginning, the middle, and the end, and know exactly where it's going so that they have a clear vision of where they're going. And now, then they get stuck sitting on their computer, sitting, staring at a blank screen, trying yeah. to innovate, and it just doesn't come to them. I see it all the time. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's because there's a fear that you're not going to be able to finish the story. So if you start with a story and say, here's where I need, I know I need to end up. I need to end up here. Then I've got a middle, this is what I want to accomplish, here's the beginning, and here's the different plot points that I need to go. All of a sudden you've got a blueprint, you can sit in front of the computer and you can say, here's what I'm going to do today. For instance, you may write a scene near the end and not near the beginning. That's okay in filmmaking because it doesn't really matter, sure. right? But here's the secret, and I really do think it's a secret, James, and I've noticed it with everything that we have worked together with. You need to have a clear vision of what you're going to accomplish and then, and then do it. You need to sit down and type. You need to sit down and create your story because if you create your story at the very beginning, the filmmaking sort of flows. If you don't comp have a clear idea, then you're stuck. And and you know, I've seen your films and it's obvious you have a clear idea of where you want to go. I think we're very like-minded in the sense that uh, we have to approach it fully prepared. Uh, before I even begin writing anything down, I have to know who my characters are, I have to know where my locations are, the names of things, whatever history or facts need to be researched. Uh, a tons of research for me goes into a screenplay before I even sit down and one single word is written down. And that's what I think the secret to success is in, f in finishing a project. I have worked with a number of guerrilla uh, filmmakers and I think the number one problem that I have discovered is that the writing process for them is not complete. They go into the project thinking, okay, I don't have this figured out yet, but we'll figure it out when we're filming. That's the worst time to figure out something, the absolute worst time. The best time to figure it out is when you don't have crews waiting, you don't have uh, talent waiting, you're in your writing mode by yourself or with a collaborator, and you create scene by scene by scene by scene, and then it, you can see exactly what's being created. You flush it out, you think it over, you go to sleep at night, you wake up the next morning, and by the time all the words are on the page, being unprepared is, is, the, is the bane of all aspiring filmmakers. And then they fail and they wonder why. Well, it's because they didn't plan it out correctly. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, John, I want to go back and talk a little bit more about your adventure novel, Return to Treasure Island. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a big fan of all your books. As far as I'm concerned, they only get better as they go. But Return to Treasure Island is always special to me because I love the pirate genre. I love the culture. Um, that book took you an extra long time because what made it so fantastic uh, was the language and the cadence. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what it took to write uh, a story like Return to Treasure Island? Yes. Um, it turns out that Robert Louis Stevenson was the first example of how pirates talked ever written that I could find. And so basically you might say that Robert Louis Stevenson created pirate language, but he was really just parroting what he heard in the Bristol docks with, with the pirates sure. and so on. So once I knew that that was the basis of the language, then I had to create a book Bible or a dictionary, and I had pirate language written out what it meant and how he used it. Wow. Now that took a long time. That, it was about 40 pages long of all the way that pirates talked in the original Treasure Island. So that when I did the Return to Treasure Island book, the pirate talk was exactly right, but it wasn't mimicking. I could then write new dialogue but use Robert Louis Stevenson's rules for pirate talk and it sounded exactly the same. Wow. Now I think that you have something like that that you have to deal with with this new 
Viking movie that you're working on, is that correct? As a matter of fact, that's true, John. Uh, the upcoming project, Ulf Ed Nar, uh, is something that is a historical piece, yet has a certain element of fantasy to it. And we've gone to great lengths, including bringing in a professional historian, uh, not only to help us make sure that the dialogue and the cadence of the piece is accurate, you know, but as well as the costuming and the props and the battle scenes and, uh, and the mannerisms and the behaviors of the Vikings as well. Now, outside of the projects that you and I are working on, you also have several novels that are in the process of being produced as uh, feature films. Uh, could you speak a little bit to the process of going from the novelization of a story to the screenplay version of the story? Sure. Um, that's the cadence of it is fiction into film, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and, you know, I write my novels because I was trained in the screenplay genre. Uh-huh. I, I write my novels. A lot of people tell me when they read my novels, they're watching a movie. That's absolutely how I feel when I read a John Woods novel. It's uh, I can see it in my head, yeah. like it's playing out like a film. And that's how I write them. Uh, and and the people that are transferring the uh, the books into uh, screenplays have told me the same thing. But I want to share a story with you because uh, when I was just a young kid, like 22, I was in Cal State Fullerton uh, College. And I needed to get uh, five units made up so I could get uh, my undergraduate degree. And they had a, f a class called Fiction into Film. Hmm. So I said, okay, I'll skate through that. Well, it turned out to be one of the most interesting classes I'd ever been to. And what we did was we would read the book that the movie was based on and then watch the movie and then see the differences that were made from the novelization to the screenplay. Okay. And one of the most interesting was Planet of the Apes. Uh, Planet of the Apes was, uh, was a wonderful novel. Uh, we read it, but it just wouldn't work as a screenplay. It just didn't work. Interesting. But they hired Rod Serling. Uh -huh. And Rod Serling saw the elements of the novel that really worked and took them. And there are many, many, many scenes in the movie that are directly word for word out of the novel. I didn't know that. Interesting. But he created a new, uh, uh, sort of a new um, plot points especially the one at the end with the Statue of Liberty. That wow. wasn't in the original book. So it's just amazing how uh, the process from, from the uh, f books into screenplays. But getting back to the original question, I write my books as if they were screenplays, so it gives very little room to the person writing the screenplay, which is usually not me because, you know, they want somebody bigger to do it. But I, I give them enough of the story to where they can transfer it and it still maintains the uh, the sort of the heart and soul of the book. Right on. Yeah. John, as a writer, I have to ask you about your process. Um, do you have a certain methodology when you write? Do you have a ritual? What is your experience when you sit down to write something? And so what I do now is, as I mentioned earlier, I will spend an inordinate amount of time uh, creating the plot points, what I would call an outline of the entire book. And, and within that outline, I will then create a larger outline and say, this is what I have to do within these, each, each one of these scenes, almost like a movie. The actual process of writing is such that I'll sit down about two or three hours a day, no longer, and then I'll write. And I usually get done about seven to ten pages a day. And the reason I can do that many is because I spent so much time on the outline. Sure. So by doing this method, at the end of 30 days, I have the entire book written. Wow. Now, that's the first draft. And as uh, my writing professor in film school, Leon Roth, said, John, the first draft is the easiest. That's when the work starts, right? The rewrites. And they are. They're quite arduous. But I'll set the book aside for a month and then come back at it. And during that time, my, my subconscious mind seems to have worked out a lot of the plot points and things of that sort that I haven't, haven't been able to work on consciously. And then I'll go through it again. Now, when I go through it again, it's usually about two months. Wow. But that's the process. But uh, again, I cannot stress too much that the most work is the figuring out what I'm going to do at the beginning and then having it so laid out that I get to the end. Now, there's another point of this, too. And that is a lot of people may say to me, well, what about the creativity process when you're writing? You may discover this, you may discover that. And that's true. 
And in fact, in Return to Treasure Island, halfway through the book, I realized I need another character. Oh, wow. And so I thought about it, and that's when I created Captain Steel, mm. a, a main protagonist in the book. It meant that I had to go back all the way to the beginning and rewrite it again, right, to bring him into it. Arduous. But, yes, but it made the book better. So there's always that room for creativity when you're writing. You can always explore characters a little bit differently than you thought you would. It doesn't take care of, uh, it doesn't stop the creative process, but uh, the, the main creative process is at the beginning. Uh, in the world of guerrilla filmmaking, however, we have an entire different set of problems, and especially when it comes down to the writing, it's an entire different ballgame. You're right, and, and again, with the writing process, having the consciousness and the parameters to know that we're going to have to guerrilla film this, and we can have this scene or that scene, budgetary constraints and creativity have to be a part of it. And I'll give you an example. Uh, Roland Emmerich in his first movie, before he did uh, Independence Day and all that sort of thing, he was a guerrilla filmmaker. And uh, he had a prison scene, and he needed to shoot a prison, but he only had one set of jail bars. So what they did was they got mirrors, and they positioned it to where it looked like it was a whole prison wow. with just one set of, of uh, jail bars. In the same vein, um, I think that being a guerrilla filmmaker allows a lot more creativity uh, to, to spring forth in the filming process. Big studios, when they have huge budgets, if they got a $100 million budget, they don't have to be creative. They just throw money at a problem, and then the problem will be solved. But that $100 million also takes away the creative process because you don't have to think up things to do. Whereas in guerrilla filmmaking, the thing that replaces those big budgets is the creator and the director's creativity on how to shoot scenes, how to create special effects, how to make things look as if it was a $100 million movie within the constraints of the budget. And so that's a different writing process, and that has to be addressed at the beginning also. You have to be innovative. You have to make scotch tape and popsicle sticks work to create the Death Star. And, and I actually think that, um, that the viewing audience will appreciate that more than the hundred million dollar special effects. I think that what's missing now in, uh, in filmmaking is the real creative stories told in a creative way that used to be the whole backbone of the film industry in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. That's true. You know, there almost seems to be a vacuum of creative ability in Hollywood these days. They seem to just regurgitate the same old stories over and over, and not even the good ones. Mm, I agree. Not one person will write that show. It has to be approved by everybody from the top of the studio down to everybody. And so that's the reason you have vanilla, because nobody wants anything other than vanilla, the sure thing, the $100 million, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, so that's why I really appreciate guerrilla filmmaking and especially the efforts that you're you're doing to bring these type of stories to the public. Well that works great for them but guerrilla filmmakers like myself have to be more innovative and more creative and it all begins with the story writing mm -hmm. and the storytelling process. Uh, before we wrap up John I'd like uh, if you could give a little advice to those out there that maybe filmmakers maybe they're writers uh, it doesn't matter where they're at is there any encouragement or advice you could offer them to help them along in their process in case maybe they're struggling with their art form? Do not let people discourage you. I heard from all kinds of people saying, you know, is this the right thing? Even my mom and dad, what are you doing? You're selling your company, you're going back to film school at 40 years old, why are you doing this? So number one, don't let people discourage you. Number two, don't let professionals discourage you. With Return to Treasure Island, I received 87 rejections wow. on that book before it was finally accepted by a publisher and it ended up winning Book of the Year and it's being made into a movie. So do not listen to people telling you it's bad. Now, having said that, if people say, you know, you need some work on this or people that you trust, take advice that way, but don't let anybody tell you to stop your passion. And that's the third thing. Writing for money is something that I don't do. Now, I don't discourage it, but I just say, it's a lot easier writing stories that I care about, and then when things come up about, oh, it's not working or something like that, 
I still have the heart left in me to continue it because it's a story I want to tell. Sure. When you're being, when you're saying to yourself, I'm going to write this story because it's going to make me a million dollars, very seldom does that work out. So that I would say that those are the three main things. The last thing is try and learn about the medium that you want to write in. If you want to be a screenwriter, read screenplays, understand how they're done. Go to night classes or go to school and see what's going on. If you want to write novels or books or short stories, I don't recommend necessarily taking a lot of classes in it, although you need basics. But if you want to learn how to write great books, read great books, become a reader. And, and the last thing is become a storyteller. Get in touch with stories that interest you. If the story interests you, it's very possible that it'll interest more people, right? Don't, again, try and think up stories that will make you a million dollars. Think up stories that are very compelling to you and very interesting to you, and then you can turn those stories into either screenplays or books, and if they're good, then you'll get your million dollars. Fantastic words of wisdom from a fantastic author. John, I can't thank you enough for coming down. Oh, well, thank you, James. It was a pleasure being here. Oh, my pleasure. For those of you interested in exploring the further works by John O'Melveny Woods, I invite you to go to his website, www.indytv.com. I'd like to thank you folks for visiting us. My name is James Storm for JS Company Productions. I thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoyed our show.